Welcome to Scotch Plains, New Jersey. This is Comcast Cable Channel 34, Scotch Plains Television. Your town, your TV. JSA is an entirely student-run organization. Uh, basically, its purpose is to focus on politics and uh, just politically charged teenagers and high school students who want to debate, who want to talk about whatever issues are pertinent in the America and the world today. And uh, really, get a better focus on government and politics and economics. We focus a lot on like economic growth, and of especially the United States. And sometimes we get really complicated into you know, fiscal, fiscal policy, monetary policy, but basically it's just, it can be as in-depth or as shallow as you want it to be, and just really politically motivated kids getting together and talking. Okay, the resolve today is resolved. Supreme Court justices be popularly elected. Debating pro is Andrew Lipstein. Debating con is Cheryl Becchiai. Do you have a timekeeper? Okay. Now the pro will debate for six minutes with his opening. Mr. Lipstein. Thanks, Mr. Goldberg. Okay, um, I believe that America should elect its Supreme Court justices as opposed to appointing them in the past because this would solve a few issues that we have in the Judicial Department of America, and it would not cause many problems. Uh, first of all, as you may have remembered, as Judge Alito has to be confirmed in Congress, uh, it took many weeks and even months to find out what his true views were. If we elected our Supreme Court justices, uh, each um, hopeful Supreme Court justice would obviously uh, proclaim their views as clearly as possible and we wouldn't have this problem. Um, electing justices is actually a common practice in the United States. It's not that we don't elect any justice, we just don't, don't elect Supreme Court justices. The Constitution leaves it up to the states whether they want to elect a justice or not. In seven states, a the justices are elected as in on a partisan side, meaning a judge is elected as either a Democrat or Republican, and in 14 other states, a judge is elected nonpartisanly. So in 21 states, we have already judicial elections, so it's not a new policy at all. Uh, the con side might say that, for example, uh, the Judicial Department of the United States is not a popularity contest. Their job is to uphold the Constitution. But to that I say, the executive branch of the United States uh, Constitution, like the President, his or her job isn't to be popular either. It's to uphold the laws that the legislature makes. And because we live in a democracy, we pick our office holders, the people that are either A, going to be passing the laws, B, executing them, or C, deciding whether something's lawful or not. Uh, and to that, I'll take questions. OK, so what do you feel about the packing of the house that some presidents do in their lame duck phase at the end of their terms? Yeah, I definitely agree with you in that um, there are many problems with this current system we have in which the president appoint, appoints Supreme Court justices. Because if President Bush wanted to right now, instead of appointing Alito, he could literally appoint anyone who meets the bare requirements of the judicial standards. And I think that's a real problem. We need the public to have some sort of take in this for true democracy to be carried out. Okay, so do you think by electing justices, uh, they can, they'll have terms now instead of staying there as long as... Uh, they, they do. That wasn't a very good question. <laughs> as long as they can. My, my question was, when we elect just, now that we, if we, to, if we were to elect justices, would they have terms like presidents or senators? Well, if we were to elect justices, the question of term limits is up in the air. Uh, either A, we do we do now where justice serves until he or she retires, and in that case we should have elections, or another a uh, possibility is to have a term, maybe it's eight years, which I also think is a good idea. Because let's just say, um, let's say Mr. Alito were to become, a, or he carries out a few years, and we realize his true policies are really anti-constitutional and totally detrimental to the American system. At that point, once his term is over, we could uh, end his term and elect somebody else. All right, um, you said before how the Supreme Court Justice's job is to uphold the law 
so or the Constitution. So do you think that by having justices popularly elected, it'll become more the justices? It's kind of a bad question, I know. Just bear with me. Uh, don't you think that if the people were to elect justices, they would elect them only on political current, current political issues and not really think about how they can uphold the Constitution like later on or years from now? Yeah, I, I do agree with you that, uh, for example, how a certain Supreme Court justice looks might actually impact elections. As we know, it does the presidency, which is a very important position. And I think that would negatively impact who would become Supreme Court justices, but those are the sort of negative aspects that come with democracy. I mean, if we wanted to, we could have every political position be based on merit, and we would eliminate uh, the politician sort of war we have today, but I don't think that the American way. Uh, don't you think since we would be electing these, uh, if popularly, it'd be like just like a presidency where you'd get, like, you wouldn't have women or black people become justices because it's done like a vote. That's why, you know, how the presidency has always been a white male. Yeah, I do agree with that. The presidency has always been a white male. And I also think they were moving in the direction of more diversity in the presidency. And that would be another problem in that uh, the Supreme Court justice might fall into the same trap as um, the presidency in that all of the presidents seem to be old, white, and Christian. But I think it's up to the citizens uh, to decide whether they want to change that or not, and that's democracy. Any other questions? The chair absorbs the time. Now the con will speak for six minutes. When justices are appointed to the Supreme Court, they are under careful review by not only the president and their peers, but also by the U.S. Senate. Um, justices are supposed to be of the absolute highest legal intelligence, and they're supposed to com uh, comprehend everything that the Constitution says and be able to interpret those laws, and especially the Constitution, to determine if laws are constitutional or not. They're not in place just to look at the laws and, on a partisan level, determine if they agree with the laws or not. Justices are not supposed to be extremely partisan. They're not supposed to have a either conservative or liberal attitude. And they're not supposed to, the whole US isn't supposed to know this. Justices are supposed to have an unbiased or at least somewhat bipartisan outlook on the interpretations of the laws because they're supposed to interpret the Constitution as it was written. Also, the point of justices, as the pro side kind of alluded to, is that Justices aren't supposed to conform to whatever the popular opinion is. Justices are supposed to follow exactly what the Constitution is and interpret the laws as they are written. The judicial branch's purpose is to interpret the laws, not to rewrite them, not to decide what they actually say, but to interpret them as the Constitution and as the laws state. So this is not something that should be popularly determined. It should not be determined on a partisan level. There shouldn't be parties that determine what a justice how a justice should politically align themselves. It should be justice for justice and how they interpret the Constitution and how closely they follow the Constitution. If some random person, just like some random people decide to be representatives or senators, if some random person decided that they wanted to be a Supreme Court justice and got enough popular support, they, a person who might not have the same legal understanding or understanding of the Constitution as somebody else, might get elected just because their name is more familiar or they look better on camera. Also, justice, disagreement between the justices is not necessarily bad. And what could occur in a popularly elected Supreme Court is that all of the Supreme Court justices may be either Democratic or Republican, much like the House and Senate are now. The House and Senate are both Republican, and this often causes, I mean, we saw with the Social Security debate, this caused gridlock. But this kind of dissent would not occur in the Supreme Court if the same thing happened. If, it, if all justices were popularly elected, uh, you wouldn't have this dissent. And the dissent is always good, because it always provides communication and discussion over how to interpret the laws. Um, the separation of powers between the branches is also necessary. And if every branch is, is democratically elected or popularly elected, then 
what could happen is all three branches would be controlled by a single party, all three branches would be controlled by maybe one ideological group, and this would eliminate separation of powers altogether because the president would become even more imperial than he is right now. Um, also, we in the United States are not under a truly perfectly democratic system. We know this with the presidential election. The president is not elected absolutely democratically because they're not elected by the popular vote. They're elected by the electoral vote. So this isn't the, even the highest office of the state is not popularly elected entirely. And so we cannot give the Supreme Court justices a popular election. Okay. So as BJ said before, what do you feel about how presidents will pack the House with justices that believe in similar views that they have, and how is that a separation of power? Well, that can absolutely happen in the exact same way as it can with a popular election. If the entire population is thinks that they're ideologically liberal uh, during one administration, like one presidential administration, they would vote for all potentially liberal justices and all the laws would be interpreted in that liberal way. So the Demo under this democratic system, the House could be packed just as easily. Well, you said you weren't in favor of uh, the Supreme Court being elected popularly because the highest position in the state is elected electorally. Would you be in favor of the Supreme Court also being elected elector electorally instead of popularly? That's not exactly what I'm saying. I was just pro more proving that even the highest, uh, highest position of the state is not elected under this democratically elected or this popular vote. So not, it's nowhere in the Constitution is it said that everybody must be elected uh, popularly and even this position that we hold to be so democratic isn't elected popularly. Well, Cheryl, if you say that the, both the popular and the electoral voting systems have flaws in it, why not just use the popular vote instead of the electoral vote, which better expresses the views of the American people? I never did say that both systems have flaws in them. I'm simply stating that the American government and the American democ democratic system does not follow a strictly popular electoral system. And that I, I just explained why a popular vote would not be perfect for the Supreme Court, because it would allow people who are unfit to be Supreme Court justices to get into those positions that are so important. You said that if justices were popularly voted that somehow incompetent people would manage to get into the Supreme Court. My question is, are you saying that only the president knows who is of the utmost uh, intelligence and competency for the uh, position of Supreme Court justice? Absolutely not. Uh, but the president is not the only person who is involved in the appointment of Supreme Court justices now. Uh, the president is, and the entire Senate is, and the person and nominee for the Supreme Court is up to, up to the scrutiny of the Senate Judiciary Committee, as well as every other senator who, who wants to ask them questions. So the, I think that 100 people, plus the president and all of his advisors, who do have the highest knowledge, or some of the highest knowledge of the Constitution and the laws of the land, should probably be the best judges of who best knows the Constitution and who best can interpret the laws, rather than the American public who doesn't, uh, as a whole, know really as much as the elected leaders about the laws. Before you were saying, uh, or asking, uh, couldn't we elect anybody to the Supreme Court, um, to a Supreme Court seat, and but couldn't you also just elect anybody as president? I mean, you said, that Supreme Court justices have to go through, you know, uh, law school and they have to be a lawyer first, but aren't there also uh, natural prerequisites for being president that the voters would take into account? Okay. Um, I didn't say that there were any, that a Supreme Court justice had to go through law school necessarily. And yes, there are natural prerequisites that may come through, but for popularly elected positions such as uh, rep state representatives or uh, national representatives in the House of Representatives are not always of the highest technical knowledge of the specific wording of laws in legal, in the legal jargon, and not all representatives are experts in the legal field. But Supreme Court justices should be, and the popular electorate body might not know exactly who is the best fit for to interpret such laws. Okay, time.
Okay, do we have anyone that would like to debate pro subsequent? BJ? Okay, both sides make good points, but the pro problem is representation. Now, there are big states such as California and New York who have in the past vote, have been uh, Republican states. It, you know, if that's wrong, then you know, just say all I mean. But um, since they are Republican states, that Republican Party most of the time gets most of the votes. This shows, you know, as, as an example of the previous election, this shows that it's not always the best way to do things. Um, you can vote by the popular vote, which more shows the majority of uh, America, instead of using this strange system of numbers that don't make any sense. But um, if you do that, you'll now have better representation in the justices and therefore get rid of this whole problem of packing the house and also getting rid of uh, unfair um, representation in the government. Questions? All right, BJ. If, if you were to elect a Supreme Court justice, though, why would you have by the popular vote when not even half the people in America know what the Constitution actually is? Well, Chris, the problem with that is that not everybody in the United States is educated enough in order to do that kind of thing. Um, it is known that not everybody votes, and that is a problem. And although this is an error in the system where not everybody gets a say in it, this error is not going to be solved by simple means of changing it to a popular or an electoral vote. So even though people might not know the Constitution, they do, they do know who to vote for. But if you do have an electoral vote, or if you have a president putting in their own people that they choose into the Supreme Justice Court, you now have one person who knows all about it, like the, how it works and everything, instead of having the people who, don't, who are there representing and who they're affecting know what, what's going on. So you know, it, it just, it's another way of showing how um, it should be popular vote and not an electoral vote. Okay, this kind of goes along with the previous question. Do you feel that we as people who don't know as much about the Constitution are qualified to assess how much uh, potential Supreme Court justice knows about the Constitution? Yes, I do think that. That, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I'm sorry over here. Now, I do think th that's two different things, being qualified and being, uh, I think you said, able to understand it, right? That's what you said. Can you just say your question over again? Like, uh, do you think that because, that because we don't know that as much about the Constitution as potential judges and the people who appoint the judges that we're qualified to assess uh, if potential judges do know or uh, what they do know about the Constitution? Um, well, if I'm understanding your question correctly, um, the whole deal is that you shouldn't need to know the government front and back in order to have yourself represented in it in order to get your own say. Um, so that e even if people don't know what's going on, they should still be able to vote for the people that they want in the uh, Supreme Justices and not what, some, uh, not what the uh, head leader wants. Does anyone want to, does anyone want to debate the con subsequent? Tom? Okay, um, the problem with having, enabling uh, citizens of America to vote for um, the Supreme Court judges kind of defeats the purpose of having an unbiased Supreme Court judge because um, the way it is now, when there's a vacancy on the su Supreme Court, the president will appoint the person that um, he best feels uh, capable of being Supreme Court judge, and then the Senate approves them. And, but when you have to have uh, the citizens vote, then it becomes like a, a personal thing, because then you're going to have like two people competing against each other, and people are going to vote with their hearts naturally to, uh, towards which person they like better, not necessarily who's best suited for the job. <laughs> and another thing, um, the president and the uh, the senators they all like they all know a lot more about the con constitution and the government, and um, they're a lot more mature and more educated than uh, the average citizen, uh, even though that's not really a requirement.
to become in their position, it kind of is like an unofficial requirement because of like how many like uh, uh, strings they had to had to pull and like people they have to meet and stuff they had to do to get in their position. So they they naturally know more. Um, that's really all I have to say. I'll take questions. Well, Tom, uh, if so, are you saying that the people of America are not smart and mature enough in order to choose to make their own decisions? Well, unfortunately, I am saying that. Um, it's not really their fault. It's just that the majority of America really doesn't know that much about their government and constitution, and that's what you're going to have when uh, you enable like ordinary citizens to vote. Uh, you said before how if uh, ju justices were elected by a popular vote that what do you say that it would be very bipartisan, very political, and all that. The problem is, as of right now, the president does pick candidates who lean more towards <laughs> conservative Republican beliefs. So, don't you think that this politically it doesn't really have the same? It really doesn't have any different political consequence. The, the president does pick judges that lean towards his beliefs. But then again, you got to consider that the entire Senate has to confirm them, and they have like all these committees to like do background checks and all that. And he's really like put under enormous scrutiny to see if he's really right for the job. But um, if you have people vote, they'd have to be voting between two or maybe three candidates, and you're, uh, you're going to have more of like, a, uh, like an opinion kind of thing involved there. All right, so you said that after the president uh, picks his candidate for the uh, Supreme Court office, um, the Senate has to approve it. But if the Senate majority is also Republican, then wouldn't they just approve of him as well? Well, Harriet Myers did not get approved by the uh, Senate. And he was, a, they were appointed. So, Tom, what happens when we get an incompetent person put into the presidency who then puts in their own people who they think is right instead of the American people? Well, the answer to that, to that is simple. Even if we get an incompetent person put into the presidency, we, we still have the entire Senate to uh, back us up on that decision. Like, he, he'll, maybe he'll pick, like, a stupid person who can't, like, d uh, perform the task, the job of a Supreme Court justice. But the Senate will surely like find out if he really is right for the job or not, and prevent him if he isn't. Motion to move to previous question. All op all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The, the ayes have it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're now going to move to the closings. The con side will go first and we'll speak for four minutes. <laughs> okay, as uh, Tom just so eloquently put, the purpose of the Supreme Court is not to adequately represent the body of the population of the U.S. The the purpose of the Supreme Court is to interpret the laws that are made by the legislative branch and executed by the executive branch. Uh, the idea is not to maintain a political ideology or specific one-sided party politics, but the idea is to remain nonpartisan or as nonpartisan as possible and to best interpret the Constitution as it was originally written. Also, the way that the system is set up right now Supreme Court justices should be determined in a fairly democratic way as the system stands. The president is elected through the Electoral College, which is voted upon by the American citizens and the American <coughs> voters. So the American people elect the president who is going to be nominating these Supreme Court nominees. Also, the American public are the ones who are electing the senators and their representatives who, or the senators, who put the Supreme Court nominee through intense questioning and eventually vote upon that nominee. In this administration, we saw a conservative Republican get turned down because the Senate did not find her to be of adequate legal knowledge. And 
it doesn't matter that the fact that she was a Republican, the Senate was a Republican, and the president who nominated her was a Republican. She was unfit for the job, and the people in power, the people who were elected to determine if she is fit for the job, determined no, she wasn't. So she did not become a Supreme Court justice. That's all I have to say. Thank you. One major point, and that is that the main job of someone on the judicial side of the government or in the Supreme Court is to uh, carry out the laws and make sure that everything that is done is constitutional. And I can't help but reiterate the fact that the main point of the executive branch is to execute the laws, yet we still lack them. And then the main point of the legislative branch is to make new laws and serve their constituents and represent the American body. But yet we still represent them as well. So I feel as though we can have a working judicial system that is, uh, you know, uh, adequate enough because I have faith in the American people that they will elect someone with great con credentials, but also carry out democracy. This is a simple matter of democracy, and I feel that if you're for democracy, then you are for the pro side. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move to a vote. Once again, it's resolved. Supreme Court justice be popularly elected. All who want to vote pro, raise your hand. Come on, hands down. Hands down, hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Normally means you put your vote. Okay. All right, hands up for those voting. Wait, show you pro. Oh. All right, wait, wait. Hands up for pro kids. Okay, six. Charlotte or hand up original? Yeah, it looked like we had a lot more people. Yeah. Well, because Charlotte counts like you. Charlotte, that's Charlotte, that's Charlotte, that's Charlotte, that's Charlotte, that's Charlotte. All that vote con? Oh, yes. Extensions? Okay, the resolve fails 6 to 11. Boo! Popular vote. <laughs>